Okay, like so it's my uh, uh, a great pleasure to invite my distinguished colleague, uh, Professor Judy Balzas from uh, from Hungary. Um, I'm not going to read the, the list of her achievements and awards, um, but for those of you who are interested, it's very long. <laughs> you can read it in Wikipedia, probably. But um, we've been colleagues for many years, and she's certainly a pioneer of uh, suicide prevention uh, in general and suicide prevention in schools. And for those of you who know a little bit about suicide prevention, one of the most successful programs that have ever been done is in Hungary, where they had one of the highest rates of suicide in the world, and now it's dropped uh, considerably thanks to the classic intervention studies that were done in Hungary. So without further ado, I'd like to prevent uh, Professor Bowser to give you a Thank you very much, Anne, and then welcome everybody. Uh, some of you already heard me. I hope I will be not too repetitive for you. So what this keynote was as, then this it's really a pleasure to me to talk to you There's about uh, mental health interventions in schools uh, and about barriers and solutions. I try to give you some tips. So as Alan just said, I come from Hungary. Uh, you can see Hungary where we are in the world, a little bit far from you, but it's really an honor to me to be this part now of the world and talk to you. Um, uh, Hungary is in Eastern Europe and you can see the surrounding countries. And what is really interesting and uh, that uh, and said for us living there, that uh, traditionally uh, for a long time, we have a much higher suicide rate I will show you data than our surrounding countries. So it, uh, it makes us a lot of thinking, what can be behind? And maybe it's a bit similar to your situation. Uh, I just managed to, to put together our countries uh, and if I found right data, uh, this is uh, the size of your country, and you can see my country. And um, uh, so Hungary uh, oh, still are not so different. So thank you. Uh, yeah, these are the numbers what I wanted to tell you. So maybe we are still in a similar situation, uh, seeing the numbers. Uh, traditionally, uh, that's what I wanted to show you in numbers, that uh, in the 1980s, uh, the suicide rate in Hungary was 44 uh, per uh, 100,000 inhabitants. That's even a little bit higher what you have now here with 39. We managed to go, the, the, green, uh, not the green, green line is Hungary. Um, and uh, you can see there are the EU countries, European Union countries. We managed to go down. So we are now below uh, 20, and uh, which is a good news in this way that less than half. You can see here that we are almost the only country, uh, the political changes were in Hungary in uh, uh, 1989. Uh, um, uh, that means that before we were a communist country and then after that it changed. Uh, and it's interesting that it started to go down. So 
uh, much after the political changes, I usually ask my students that, okay, so what do you think? What can be behind? And it's an inviting question that may be political changes, but we know that we are almost the only uh, post-communist country where suicide rate went down. So maybe that's not that political changes because you can see the other lines here went up. Uh, so I will think about it with you together and go, uh, then focusing to school. But it's a good news that it went down, but you can see the blue line is the European Union average, uh, and we, which is around 10 per 100,000 inhabitants. So we have almost still the double than the EU average. And we are still almost the uh, second uh, in, uh, in the EU. So uh, we have still a lot to do. And people who, who are a bit older than me, uh, worked in the early 90s, you should know the name, Professor Rimmer, uh, uh, and there were some other nice people, psychiatrists, they are still nice and still active, um, who, who worked very intensively with it. And what we think that one of the main reasons maybe to decrease suicide rate, that knowledge uh, and the knowledge uh, uh, to GPs, to, in, in uh, and uh, to in the media about uh, uh, the reasons of uh, uh, risk factors of suicide and the very important role of depression got no and the GPs got no uh, but recognized uh, general practitioner uh, depressed people and. Um, could even give treatment, and that can be one reason. But as we, and I tell you another thing, that uh, there is a big difference in the country. Hungary, as I showed you, is not a big country. Um, oh my, okay, so we are here now. So you see our country there, you know, your country, and the statistics show that there is a big difference in the western and eastern part of the country. Eastern part of the country is close to the ex-Soviet Union, uh, Romania. The western part is close to Austria, bordering with Austria. And in the eastern part, it's uh, at least three times higher, the suicide rate, than in the western part. So we cannot even talk about Hungarian suicide rate. And what they found that alcohol use is much, much higher and social economic status is lower in the Eastern part. So it's, as we know, uh, that suicide is a multi-causal multi event. Uh, all these should be account. Okay. Uh, and uh, this is the age uh, distribution of suicide rate in Hungary. And it's somehow uh, the, the data uh, or so what is low and high are similar to other countries. And you can see that luckily among youth, the numbers are uh, lower than in middle age or in elderly. Um, and you can see on this slide that, that suicide, as in almost all countries in the world, uh, it's uh, the completed suicide is much higher in all age group among men. And uh, actually, you, you don't see on this slide, but I tell you that attempted suicide is usually higher among women. And uh, we think about several reasons behind. Uh, one 
could be that uh, help-seeking behavior is uh, much less accepted among men. And uh, though depression, which is one of the most important risk factor of suicide is higher among women, while women uh, go to seek help because they, uh, it's, uh, it can be even uh, more accepted culturally that a woman has a problem, uh, men don't do that. Uh, and I think this is, uh, of course, first issue is that to get knowledge that uh, we all can have problem. Next thing is that these cultural roles, which I think you have to do in your country as well, we have to do in Hungary as well, um, has to handle. Uh, as I told you that luckily the numbers are uh, lower uh, or the percentage in, in, in younger generation. But in Hungary, if I just saw you, show you raw numbers, which is, of course, uh, not correct in this way, but does not make uh, comparable countries. But if we see the age group uh, from 15 to 24 in Hungary, we know about uh, more than 100 uh, completed suicide cases uh, in Hungary in last year, which I put in that way, uh, that in Hungary, a classroom is about uh, 35 students that it can count three completed class. Uh, and these are the suicide rates which are uh, documented to suicide. Sometimes uh, we don't know at the end it counts to accident, so it can be that even higher. So that's why uh, it's uh, very important already to focus in this age group. Uh, okay, so what my presentation, the rest will be, is about mental health interventions in schools. Uh, in general, I uh, would like to share you some information that uh, we, we have to know that uh, this age group being adolescents, maybe as I see you, the people around, some of them really know what it means just now as well, being adolescents or you are a bit after that. But I think all of us remember to this age period of our life or our children's life. So that's a vulnerable uh, period during development. Uh, it's not easy sometimes to be adolescent uh, with the healthy development, with healthy uh, surrounding, because people, uh, young people have to get out from childhood, get their, find their role as adolescents, have to be more independent from parents, uh, have to find their role among peers, uh, maybe the first loves happen during this period, they have to find out that what to do later in life, becoming a teacher or shop assistant or a medical doctor. These are big decisions with a lot of stress. Uh, and if some life events happen as well, and negative life events, and yeah, none of us can uh, avoid completely in life, uh, negative life events. Uh, life events means that uh, the parents divorce or, uh, or uh, just having some bad notes in school. Um, it can be that at, uh, at bullying, bullying has to be uh, uh, just avoid, or I mean, others has to help 
and interfere immediately because uh, it has a very high risk to increase all kinds of mental disorders uh, and even suicide. Uh, it can be a breakup, the first breakups in this period, and I usually uh, tell at this point that a breakup is not nice in any age, but maybe the first ones are really surprising. So all these can uh, be risk factors and happening in, in this development period. Uh, and uh, in vulnerable young people, uh, the, the uh, some mental disorders uh, just start in this period. Uh, and uh, we say that adolescent age itself, because of this lot of change, uh, it is a period for increased suicide risk. Of course, we don't have to hospitalize anybody being adolescent, but we have to be sensitive. And it's said that, oh, yeah, everybody can think of good and bad things, but during this period, we really have to be careful. Uh, and um, if already has problem in this period and we don't give help, that can uh, increase uh, health problems later life as well. So uh, there are several uh, interventions uh, which happens in school. And uh, if you check the literature, you can find, I just show you some of this program, and then I will talk to you later about these school uh, programs. One is the young program, uh, uh, Youth Awareness Mental Health Program. And this is a program where we work together with Professor Apter. I will tell a little bit more about this program later. But you can find several other programs. Um, uh, care program, for example, a well-known program, youth suicide prevention program. There are QPR programs, uh, question, pursues, uh, refer. This is for gatekeepers. Teachers are gatekeepers. Gatekeepers are the person who are in the position to recognize the people who are uh, at risk at risk of suicide. And if we take it wide, we are all gatekeepers in, in our daily life with our colleagues, uh, with our family. But in a school setting, uh, teachers are special gatekeepers because they spend a lot of time with teacher, with school, uh, students, and they have the possibility to, to follow their students and they can get, see that they have a nice active student who uh, always uh, listen in classes and teacher, if they know what to look at, they can see that, okay, my, what happened with my nice student always sleeping during the class and it can happen with all of us in one or two classes if we have a nice party the night before, but if it gets regular, the two teacher, it's important, it's nice if the pitch teacher recognizes, it's nice if the teacher just not says that, okay, he or she became a bad student, but um, uh, starts to talk with this person. Oh, I see you are recently uh, more sad. You have more 
uh, Immortaya did something happen. Uh, it maybe we could talk a little bit. Maybe is this a way I can help you to get out from this period? So this is an, a special program for teachers, but not only teachers, it says that school personnel, maybe it happens that the person in the canteen, if students go to have lunch, they recognize that, oh, this student was always chatting with me, meanwhile I gave the food and always asked for double portion and made jokes with me and the student uh, does not make jokes anymore or just don't want to have double portion. That can be a sign. So it's important that we have a possibility in school with teachers but uh, there are other programs as well. So I just put here you a mixture of programs. And uh, I would like to, to show you an important systematic review, uh, you know, systematic review, which takes all the uh, um, all, all the studies found in the literature with specific keywords and uh, check uh, the phenomenon. And uh, this systematic review, Katz and his colleagues uh, highlighted five types of uh, school-based suicide prevention programs. One are the education awareness programs. These programs familiar students, it usually goes to students themselves with sign of symptoms of suicide and how they, they can recognize it in themselves and in others. I will talk the young program what we develop uh, I, uh, is, is an awareness program. I will talk a little bit more, uh, more details about this program to you. Gatekeeper programs I just don't, don't talk to you. The QPR program is a gatekeeper program. Teachers, school personnel, how they recognize the assignments in of uh, uh, depression, being suicidal in students. And uh, it's very important that we, these programs uh, help to, to teachers, to school personnel, how to react effectively. I just told you some example before how they can react, but uh, we have to acknowledge that it's very difficult for, for a teacher, actually for all of us to react in this uh, situation. Suicide is a very difficult topic uh, for everybody. Uh, there are a lot of myths about suicide, as usually there can be myths about a lot of things in life. With difficult topics, there are even more myths. And uh, this myth exists in Hungary, but uh, in I think in all over the world. And for example, one can be that uh, if we ask somebody about uh, um, about how do you feel already, if if you see if we see that somebody maybe does not feel good, and we ask or we go further that uh, oh are you in a how do you feel? Are you suicidal? Maybe, or they ask these questions uh, that maybe we, we raise uh, suicide risk, we give tips. And that's a very, very uh, yeah, bad miss uh, because uh, if some, and, and that's a connecting miss that, uh, oh, if somebody does not feel good, we just, should leave, not disturb. That's not true. So usually people are happy if we turn to them, we try to ask them. The suicidal thoughts are very difficult thoughts. So spontaneously talk about them is uh, not, 
not easy, but we directly ask, it can be that it gives a possibility to get open and to talk about their problems. So there are studies on it that we don't give tips with this if we ask, <clears throat> but we give possibility to talk about it and to get help. And uh, yeah, it happened with me during <coughs> the Medana Varna study, the M study, that um, a parent who uh, was asked to give content just um, phoned me and asked me, how is it possible that you want to ask questions about student from my uh, daughter who is 16? If it was not in her mind before, it, you give it this tip to her and how is it? So I was talking with this mother quite a long time. She was a, a lawyer, an educated person. And of course, worrying about her daughter, so was not against me or the daughter, but but yeah. And uh, we were talking, and I explained these things in more detail. What I just told you, and at the end, this mother told me that uh, oh, okay, I understand. So if I ask somebody that oh, have you thought about uh, or 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 having uh, red hair, if somebody does not want or to color to blue, just because of this will not color, but maybe can talk about it. And I asked that, oh, that's a nice example. Can I use it later during my speech? And she said, yes. Of course. So uh, we have. I just want to tell you that we really have to educate people, and I really be I believe in education. And it happens during my clinical practice as well that psychoeducation is one of the core uh, um, point of a therapy. When I explain to the child, it doesn't matter how old the child is. On, on on her his level at the age of three, six, 12, 18, and the parents, what what is happening and what I suggest to happen. And sometimes, often the parents are just Scared, which is normal because something wrong is happening with their child. But we, if we spend time and give enough information, that's one of the core things. And that's the same in what we can do in school. Schools are good, I did not mention in that way, that there are many people there at the same time, many students, and schools are obligatory, so students have to spend time there, so at the same time we have possibility to give information to them, uh, um, and so it's a very efficient uh, way of uh, education and uh, mental health education as well. There are skill trainings which are possible to in skills as well to teach uh, students uh, to to learn coping, uh, problem solving, decision making uh, skills, and uh, we can do direct screening in schools as well. This is usually expensive on that way that we screen, then we have to go through and then immediately if we find something, the only ethical thing, or that's why we do, we have to offer help as well. Uh, that's why in that, that's good. Uh, but if we teach the uh, students, young people, how they deal with uh, um, problems, uh, uh, then it's it's good if they they already uh, can prevent uh, more severe situations. 
uh, this is an other systematic review. Uh, it's uh, uh, from uh, Sernan and he, uh, his colleagues. And uh, this uh, the systematic review uh, aimed to uh, go through the existing school-based uh, prevention program and uh, wanted to, to see uh, what uh, way they are effective. And uh, they some found 20 studies altogether and uh, only, or not only, it depends if what we say more or less. So altogether, they found 13 different uh, school programs. I just put here to you the so-called quorum figure. That's how we make systematic review. Uh, and uh, I summarized you in this table what they found. So these are the, some of the already existing uh, school prevention programs. And you can see here that uh, those elements, uh, key um, target of the program are, uh, I just, uh, made a mark what they use. So, for example, CARE program is a skill training program and has a screening assessment. QP QPR I talked to you about, that's a uh, gatekeeper program. Uh, and uh, this is uh, this the YAM program, but I will talk soon more. That uh, education awareness program, there are still training, but and in the study, what we worked with Professor Apta together, that's called the SALI study. I will talk about it. Uh, that uh, has a screening part as well. I just thought that maybe it's useful for you to see it together that there are already existing programs. So when we start and uh, we really want to do something in schools, we, we can go back as, and I suggest you to go back in the literature. We, you should not start from the stretch. The next thing is uh, what is important with all kind of intervention in life. We have to know that if it is effective what we are doing, because we can believe that, oh, it's nice, it works, but yeah, if we don't uh, measure it, that it just uh, believes. Uh, and among these programs, the YAM program is an evidence-based, uh, effective school-based prevention program. I will show it to you. That's why in um, uh, more detail. Just uh, before going to details with this program, I uh, put it for you the recommendation, but uh, based on these uh, systematic review and based on the existing knowledge, the author suggested how an effective school-based program should look like. So what uh, uh, this suggests based on the existing literature that uh, it uh, should be usually more occasions uh, they ended up that four session at least. And uh, uh, that's because we, I, what I do now is very boring. I have a frontal uh, uh, education um, and that's it. 
and then uh, uh, we don't have the possibilities to get to know each other. I don't have really the possibility to reflect your uh, interesting talk, what you are interested in it. It's just the frontal way that already proved that's not the most effective. So sorry that I'm just presenting and presenting. I really hope that we may have in life other possibilities. Usually the first occasion is suggested to give information and then there should be, it suggested the second, third occasion when it can be really interactive. It's nice if we even uh, um, just uh, mix up this frontal uh, situation. And then it's nice to have a last occasion when we summarize what we uh, learn together. Um, okay, and uh, it's always important if we make a school-based uh, uh, program to be aware of contextual factors. So if we go to a school, uh, we, we uh, have to know if we deal with a whole class, a part class, there are in the uh, where I am, uh, more students from different classes because it's it's a different way of communication. What we have to do with them, uh, the basics are the same, but always we have to reflect to the surrounding. We have to discuss with the students. So what is our aim? What are their expectations that we are there uh, and what we can offer? Usually in life, it's important to, in every uh, contact to discuss. So what I can offer you, what do you expect from me? Can we match? It's very important in this setting as well. It's because of all these uh, preparation files of these programs are important. Uh, site visits are uh, uh, suggested to identify what can be that uh, difficulty. Sometimes uh, uh, we we don't have a place to make a nice uh, relaxed program or uh, or it happened it happened with us as well that we put a program which was counted a bit for equal numbers of girls or boys but we went to a school where there were only boys and we had role plays where there were expected some girls so we had to just to adjust to that place very quickly uh, but I really have this experience that uh, the school principal should be really well informed and the teachers of that uh, uh, special classes as well, because if they encourage uh, a student, parents, if they make an uh, environment where they, they uh, just uh, make the feeling of the student's parent that it's important uh, what is happening, then it uh, adds to the success of the program. If uh, we have uh, that experience that, okay, they just do it because they yeah, they could not say no to us for any reason, but they are, are they are feeling as a burden. That's not good. Uh, but in these cases, sometimes if we discuss it very clearly, I have the experience that it really can help. And uh, uh, that's the same for students that we have to give uh, uh, opportunity them to give uh, feedback to, uh, to us directly their questions. 
uh, we, we should have uh, flexibility in our programs. Uh, that's what I already mentioned to you because we have to, to adjust to the uh, situation. Um, what is suggested in these programs that uh, an external uh, person should facilitate uh, uh, these programs. First of all, I would uh, highlight and I put uh, in the front the ethical reasons. You know, in a school, a teacher and student, it's not an equal situation. And uh, when we talk about mental health or any kind of health, we talk about such sensitive topics that maybe this hierarchy or special connection just stops the possibility or uh, to be open. It is anyway. Uh, difficult to be open about these topics. I think you know it in this country about stigma. I know in Hungary, but all over the world still. That's different in what level in the individual country. But unfortunately, in Hungary as well, there are a lot of stigma. And maybe they are afraid that uh, if the teacher knows that that's not good for them. It shouldn't happen, of course, but we have to be realistic. So it's, uh, yeah, that's one reason. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, uh, it's, it's a teacher is there to teach. The teacher can have an important role to identify uh, young people. The teacher has to have knowledge. That's why QPR program that I just mentioned, you get QPR programs are important. However, if there is an awareness program, it's important that a special skilled external person make this program. Um, who has special knowledge uh, on this field. And yeah, it's important not to be uh, restrictive and just highlighting one factor. So risk factor, we have to know what I already told you, that it's a, a multi-casual uh, event. Some more uh, recommendation. Um, that uh, that uh, so if we focus on one risk factor, maybe we if we give the impression that we uh, underline or uh, identify other factors which may play a role. So uh, we have to uh, be open and don't overestimate some risk factors, or in the other way around, that uh, there are risk factors which are not able to change. Uh, so uh, we shouldn't uh, overemphasize the importance of these risk factors, uh, age, gender, sexual orientation, because uh, they are not changeable. Uh, but um, important is that uh, uh, we should be open about uh, all these risk factors. And uh, we, we uh, can choose different methods, as I told you, workshop, discussions. Uh, it, it's nice to mix these methods because it said that if we reach young people in more way, we have presentations, we play together with them. If we give booklets, what they can take home, we have more chance that somehow they get the information. Or it can be that they, if they hear something in the um, frontal uh, first occasion, and then they take home a booklet, oh, that was what they were talking about. 
or it can be that on the third occasion when we have a workshop, oh, that was what uh, they were talking about, and it comes together. Uh, so, uh, and and yeah, people are different. Just to telling to a very simple thing. So maybe some people can get better information here. Some people at home in a relax in environment. Okay, so these were general uh, background knowledge, which is in the literature, and I wanted to systematically highlight it to you. What I told you before, that in a little bit more detail, I talked to you about this collaborative study, the saving in the empowering gland yards in Europe. That's the Sealy study. And that was an EU-funded uh, project. Uh, and you can see the small flags of uh, the countries who uh, participated. That's Hungary, that there is Hungary. It's not nice that I did not highlight it, Professor Apter's um, uh, yeah, flag, but it's there. Okay. And our aim was. Uh, to lead adolescents to better health. This is all our uh, aim here, I think, in this room now. And uh, how we wanted to do this, to this decrease risk-taking behavior and, this, uh, and decrease suicidal behavior and a lot of risk-taking behavior can lead to suicidal behavior, so everything is connected. And uh, what our aim was to recommend effective, culturally adjusted uh, program. And I think it's very important to highlight cultural adjusted program because I experienced as well in Hungary, and I will tell you more about it uh, in the last part of my presentation, that uh, what worked in Western Europe did not work in Hungary. So, and maybe what works uh, worked in Hungary would not work for you. And uh, not because it's good or bad, just because it's different. How, how I was grown up or the people in uh, Western Europe or here. So we have to take into consideration all these factors to, to build an effective program. Yes. Okay, I don't want to shock you after an hour talking, frontal talking with a complicated sign. I go through you this. Oh, sorry. Maybe I have an effect in it just to wake you up. There will some more come. Please be careful. I don't know. Once it came, people escaped now. I understand. So there was a baseline evolution, and the origin plan was to take thousand students from every country. We wanted to reach uh, from the 11 uh, collecting country, 11,000 participants. And uh, in Hungary, we had to end it up instead of the 40, 40, uh, eight classes, we ended up with 80, uh, with the 99 classes because the participation rate was uh, very low in the individual classes, so we had to go more classes. And now, this is the last part of my presentation, I talk about our experience during this study, which may be uh, helpful to you here to um, 
make a program. So this is Budapest, the, study, uh, the city where I come from, the capital of uh, Hungary. And we went to one part of it to know what we do. So uh, the school participation rate was about 80% uh, percent in Hungary. It was the lowest in Israel, sorry, and the highest in Roman, Romania. Uh, so when I approached the schools, that was quite okay. I, I approached the principals. They had to uh, agree. But I, uh, I, I had several issues. Uh, the, it happened that the principal told me, no, I don't want such study. We do not have problems. And actually, we knew about it that in that individual school had completed suicide before. But no, we don't have problems. I think it can happen in such countries where stigma is high. It happened in Hungary. It was very interesting to me that uh, when I went to meetings with Western European countries and Karolinska Institute from Sweden, Professor Danuta Wasserman, you could hear her uh, greeting words in the opening ceremony. She um, did this study and Christina Hovan was the uh, uh, external advisor of our study and um, and they suggested that, yes, we, if we go to schools, we can say that they can use our beautiful logo, what I just showed you, and they can put uh, 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 yeah, this logo to the school showing that they participated in an EU-funded project. And I, oh, sorry. Okay, uh, and uh, yeah, I said it in the schools and that was uh, the answer. Okay, we may participate, but we do not put the logo into our website because then parents will think that if we uh, participate in such a problem, that means that uh, we have problems. Uh, and, you know, I, I was so jealous to Western European countries when I went to meetings with the site leaders that they said that, oh, newer and newer schools want to participate. And in Hungary, I had to argue a lot that I had to reason a lot that why is it good to participate in a school prevention program. Uh, when I went, we went to the teacher parents meeting and it was very low, the parents participation rate. Uh, they were afraid that uh, if their child participates, it goes program. But when we went to the students themselves, they, they were uh, really uh, enthusiastic. We had a high participation rate. So it gives hope that it will uh, be better. Uh, actually, during this meeting, uh, which started 10, more than 10 years ago, I learned the word coming from Eastern Europe. I use the word a lot that what difficulties we have during making this study. And I learned during this meeting that we should not use the word uh, difficulties, but we should use challenges and it restructure your cognitive uh, mind. So maybe it could be useful for you to take all those difficulties, what we all have as 
challenges. I'm still learning in this process. So it's culturally, again, difficult, but we may learn it. Oh, sorry, it's really bad. This was. This is uh, our team in Hungary who we worked on this program. As I told you, we have 99 classes and uh, we managed to add 1,009 uh, young people aged 14, 16. So altogether 1,200, um, more than 1,000. Uh, that's what uh, the parents told me uh, quite often, um, that uh, we don't want to give personal data, our child does not have problems if we have we solve it at home. So all these things be Maybe it's useful for you here if you make a program to be prepared about these answers. I went to um, the parent-teacher meeting to inform the parents and my young colleagues, uh, PhD students, so who were medical doctors or psychologists, uh, they get these uh, answers or, or I get as well. And sometimes it's frustrating that we go there, we want to help and they don't uh, want to accept our help. Uh, so uh, that's why I highlight it here that maybe you will face it, but it's a challenge. We should uh, be prepared and try to explain and uh, um, tell to the um, um, parents. This is the example of what I taught you. Yeah, it was purple hair. Yeah, not red. Uh, what I learned from the mother. Really, you have to advocate um, to put time for it to talk with the parents, with the children. And we have to know that they are not enemies, just maybe they are afraid. And if we explain, we talk, we can open a lot of heat. Um, yeah, that's what happened in Western Europe that I heard from colleagues and uh, uh, that was great for them. Uh, yeah, I told you that the response rate among students was high, but there are methodological trick in it as well that uh, we are allowed, and I think it's the same everywhere in the world, that if we make a study, then first we should get content from content from the parents and if we get the content then we can talk with the child so that means that uh, we ask those uh, para those students whose parents already gave uh, content but uh, yeah we have to work on it i'm worried that again but yeah so, and now the, after baseline evaluation, uh, we made four interventions. Sorry, don't know why it happens. Uh, and one of them was a QPR program, what I told you. And uh, I talked about a QPR uh, program and Git gatekeeper concept, gatekeepers are teachers, but I want to mention to you that G, uh, general practitioners, PDF patients can be, be used in, as we went to school uh, teachers and uh, we educated them. What we have in Hungary that it was not easy for school staff uh, to talk about suicide, to talk about problems. Uh, teachers said that this program was too American for them. So you have to be ready of these critics here as well. Um, 
but uh, what was positive that uh, uh, one fifth of the teachers said that after this program, it was easier to communicate in school. Okay. Now I talk about this awareness program, what we use, we went directly to the students. And as I told you, we have this frontal lecture, but we use this beautiful, colorful booklet. We talked about lifestyle, risk behavior, suicidal behavior, and mental health problems. And uh, uh, yeah, we had some issues here as well, but, uh, but people felt that they can handle better uh, their life programs later. And I just go now because I see that it's getting too long. Uh, yeah, I was out 90 minutes, but I think it's getting long for all of us. So I just jumped to that, that uh, what was positive that uh, they really thank for us that we went to school and we contacted them. And for these four programs, what we uh, I showed you, we found the awareness program when we directly communicated students the most effective. So it's important to uh, have uh, prevention in more ways. We should talk about uh, teachers, school staff, screening, and awareness. If we have possibility to use one program, it's important to communicate, to educate the student that themselves. That, that was the most effective in a long phase. Uh, what two more things I would like to highlight that as the end that in Hungary we found important. I was especially interested in it to go to vocational schools. The sale study went to high schools, but uh, we have other populations of young people who are less focused. And these are the students in vocational schools. And what we found that the, um, so we extended the sale project without grant. And uh, I just went with my students to vocational schools and we found a higher uh, su suicidal and non-suicidal rate, much higher in vocational schools. So I would like to encourage you that to go to a different lifestyle. And as a last, I would like to tell you that uh, though the YUM program is very effective, it, uh, it costs money and we have problem in Hungary to, to pay for these programs. I encourage the government for long to, to um, implement this program to school, but they did not want to spend money, which is not good. But then I wanted to be realistic and with these young people who are my PhD students and there are a literature person as well, and then actress as well. We, and using that knowledge, what we have, from previous studies, we, we are just working on a freely downloaded program in Hungary. And that, that's what you can do as well, that to develop using your uh, the existing knowledge, what is useful for you here. And if you uh, need my help, I'm here or I'm uh, easily available, so then feel free to contact me, and uh, I would once really love you to welcome you in Budapest in our city to think further. Thank you very much. Is there any question? Are there any questions? Discussion?
Hello. So you spoke about how bullying is a risk factor in the development of any mental health illness, right? So what kind of methodology would you use in dealing with bullying because both the perpetrator and the victim are children in, in a school setting, right? So how would you deal with that? Mm -hmm. There are, so it's a very important question. It's very important that you highlight that not only the victims, but who makes the, the bully uh, are usually uh, has problems and mental health problem. Bullying uh, cannot be handled in individual level. In individual level, it has to be stopped. No, that there is that should be zero tolerance with bullying, but it, in addition to it's known now that the whole school climate should uh, handle this issue, and you can just be successful if it's not accepted in general in the school, and uh, there are specific school uh, bullying programs as bullying prevention programs as well. So I did not talk about now, but it's great that you put my put our attention to it. That if there is any specific program in a school, then a specific focused uh, prevention program should be taken. What I was talking about, these were the general awareness program, then it should be taken a bullying prevention programs. And if you read the literature, you can find those ones as well. Thank you. Okay, if there are no more questions, then uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.